All right, guys, so as promised, I'm going to put together a little video about intersections of planes here. All right, so this is three planes that are coming to an intersection. All right, I've got two different sets here. One of these, the three planes intersect at a point. The other one, the planes intersect in a straight line. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because some of you mentioned, well, I can do it when it intersects at a point, but I get lost when it intersects in a line. And I want you to realize that there's really not much of a difference between the two situations. And so I'm going to go ahead and show you both of them here. And then hopefully we'll be able to figure out kind of what the differences are and what the similarities are. Okay. So here we go. Let's just go ahead and look at the first one first. All right. I've got a, um, a system of three equations, three variables, each one representing a plane. So in order to find an intersection, because that's what I'm doing, regardless of whether it's a point or a line or, or not intersecting, if I'm going to do that, then the first thing that I have to do is to be able to um, work through substitution, elimination, graphing, right? It's the same thing as you learned back when you did linears, right? Back in Algebra 1. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and work through um, elimination you got to choose one variable. We got to get rid of one of the letters first. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put equations one and two together by elimination. And looking at my variables, it looks like maybe uh, y would be the easiest to eliminate. You can do whatever you want, it really doesn't matter. But I'm going to go ahead and eliminate the y. So I'm going to take this first equation here and multiply everything by negative two. So I'm going to have negative two x negative 2y minus 6z equals negative 10. And then the second equation will stay the way it is. And then I'm going to go ahead and put those two together. All right, so when I put those two together, I'm going to have a negative 3x. The y's are going to eliminate. I'm going to have minus 4z equals negative 7. All right? So this equation right here, this linear, already is representing the intersection of 1 and 2. So it's the combination of 1 and 2. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take 2 and 3. Okay? You can do 1 and 3. It doesn't matter. But you have to include 3 because this first equation already has 1 and 2 in it. So my third one, my next one, needs to at least include number three somehow. All right. Now uh, I can see if I'm trying to eliminate y, then again I'm going to take this second equation and multiply it by uh, negative two. So I'm going to recopy equation two there, negative x plus two y plus two z equals three. I'm going to multiply everything here by negative two, which will give me a negative eight x minus two y plus 6z equals negative 4. I put all that together and I get negative 9x. So that should have been a 2. I don't know where it went. Negative 9x plus 8z equals negative 1. So what I have here is I have one equation up here which puts together equations 1 and 2 and one equation here that puts together 2 and 3. So all three of my planes are inherent in these two equations right here. All right, so now that I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and try to put those two together. All right, so what I'm going to do, because I see that the z's are going to be eliminated pretty easily here, is I'm just going to take that first one and multiply it by two. So I'm going to have negative 6x minus 8x equals negative 14. And then the bottom one will be negative 9x plus 8 z sorry that should have been a z up there so let's just change it to a z equals negative one i put all that together and i get negative 15 x equals negative 15 therefore x equals negative one so i've come up with a single x value that exists for all three of those planes remember this first equation was planes one and two the second one was two and three so I've now found an intersection point. That should lead me to believe then that these three planes intersect at a single point, which in reality is very, very rare, but 
obviously it happened here. So now I just take the x equals negative 1. I put it back into an equation to get x to, to get y and z. I've already got a couple of equations here. So I'm just going to go ahead and put it into this one over here. So I'm going to go negative 9 times negative 1 plus 8 times z equals negative 1. So I get 9 plus 8z equals negative 1. And in the end, I subtract the, the 9 put it in for x, yep, 9, subtract the 9, and I end up, actually, I don't think that's what I'm supposed to get, did I make a mistake here? I did, x should be a positive 1, shouldn't it, because, alright, you probably caught that before I did, so I'm going to add the 9, and then I got 8z equals 8, so z also equals 1. Now that I got x and z, I can now put it into one of the other equations to get y, so I'm going to put into equation 1. 1 plus y plus 3 times 1 equals 5. So 1 plus y plus 3 equals 5. Subtract the 1 and the 3. So y is also equal to 1. So the intersection would be at 1, 1, 1. Write it this way. Don't write it as a vertical vector because it's not a vector. It's an actual point. All right? So we've looked at how to do it, and most of you said that you were comfortable with that already. The reason, again, for that is because I wanted you to see how similar these really are. Okay? So I've got a new set here. All right? Three planes. And I'm going to find the intersection. Now, since I told you one of these intersected at a point and one of these intersected in a line, we already know that this intersects in a line. That doesn't change how we go about it. We're still going to go through the exact same process. Okay? So here, again, I... I you can kind of deal with whatever you want. It looks like maybe if I take this first equation, it should be easy to eliminate the z's. Just choose what I want to multiply it by. So again, the first time I'm going to put equations 1 and 2 together. So I'm going to multiply everything here by negative 5. So that'll be negative 15x minus 10y minus 5z equals negative 5 times 1, so negative 5. Recopy that equation, so 7x plus 4y plus 5z equals 3. And when I put those two together, I should get then a linear equation with just x and y. I'll have a negative 8x minus 6y equals negative 2. All right, so remember this linear equation right here represents the first two equations put together. All right, so my next one needs to include equation number three here. It doesn't matter which one I put it with, but it's got to include number three so that I can incorporate all three planes in my two equations. So in the last one, I, I put two and three together because it looked like it was pretty easy to get rid of the y's. Remember, I eliminated the z's here, so it looks like probably putting one and three together here will be a little bit easier. So I'm going to take the top equation, multiply it by negative three, so I'm going to have negative 9x minus 6y minus 3z equals negative 3. I'm going to rewrite equation 3 because that's the one that I really need to eliminate with. Okay. And so then I can go ahead and finish just by saying, okay, well, that gives me, when I put them together, negative 4x minus 3y equals negative 1. Okay, now at this point I want you to recognize something. These two equations are the same equation. If I took this first one right here that combined the first two planes and divide it by 2, I would get negative 4x minus 3y equals negative 1. These two are the same thing. Now sometimes you might not recognize that. Okay, and if you didn't recognize that, what you would do is you would go ahead and you would try to eliminate. So I'd say, okay, well, let me just multiply this by 2. So I'd have a negative 8x minus 6y equals negative 2. And then I would be trying to eliminate, say, the x's. So I'm going to be doubling that. I'll go ahead and multiply by a negative 2 so that it gives me a positive 8. So then I'd get a positive 8x. I'd get, sorry, that should be a negative, negative 2 there. Uh, so then I'd have a positive 6y, and I'd have a positive 2, and when I put those two together, what do I get? 
I get zero equals zero. Now that's a true statement. Because it's a true statement, that means that they lie on top of each other. They're right on top of each other, okay? That means that there is an intersection, right? But the intersection is not a single point. It has to encompass all of this, okay? It's the exact same thing that we did over here in the first question, right? But in the first question, when we tried to eliminate, that was right here, when we tried to eliminate one of the letters, we ended up getting a value for x. It's the same exact process. There's no difference up to that point. Now, if I were to work this out and get something like 0 equals 3, what does that mean? Well, that means that there's no intersection. There's no solution. You learned that back when you learned systems in Algebra 1. This is just a glorified, super duper on steroids Algebra 1 problem right if you got something where there is no solution we'd have to say well these don't intersect and therefore there is no answer okay but the fact of the matter is that we got zero equals zero which means that these two are right on top of each other so that has something to do with our intersection all right so at this point we need to figure out exactly where that intersection occurs okay so that intersection is going to deal with these so what we do is we choose one of those variables, either x or y, to be our lambda. All right, so let's say that we just choose y to be lambda. So y equals lambda. That means I should be able to solve for x now, right? Now I'm gonna go back to this equation right here because it's a little bit easier to work with. So that means negative four x minus three lambda equals negative one. If I work that out, I get negative 3 lambda equals negative 1 plus 4x, and then lambda equals 1 third divide by the negative 3 minus 4 over 3x. And so I solve for, uh, actually, sorry, I should be solving for x. I am a silly goober. And so I should be adding the 3 lambda. So negative 4x equals negative 1 plus 3 lambda divide by the 4. I get x equals 1 fourth minus 3 over 4 lambda. So I've got x now. With x and y, I should now be able to solve for z. I go ahead, I put those things back into one of the equations. doesn't matter which one. I'm going to go ahead and do the first one. Uh, so I'm going to have 3 times x, which is 1 fourth minus 3 fourths lambda plus 2 times y plus z equals 1. And then I solve for z in terms of lambda. Once I have z in terms of lambda, I should be able to then write my final vector representing the line of intersection. Okay, So I'm going to go ahead and do that because I can, uh, but I'm going to pause it so you don't have to watch the whole process. I'm going to write it out here so you'll be able to see it but I'll show you the final step in just a second. All right, so I got Z here. Now I can put these all into a final equation, which I'm running out a little bit of space. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it over here. So I can make my equation R equals, I need my starting point plus lambda times my direction vector. So X here was 1 fourth minus 3 fourths lambda. So 1 fourth and then 3 fourths lambda, it's got to be a minus 3 fourths. Okay, and then I'm going to have my y, which was just lambda, so 0 and 1 lambda, and then my z, which is 1 fourth plus 1 fourth lambda, and there you go, you've got a vector. Um, now obviously I ended up with this one, if we had chosen a different letter for lambda here, if we'd chosen x lambda or z lambda, you might get a slightly different equation. However, if you put certain numbers in for lambda, you should be able to find that everything is kind of uh, equivalent. Now, if you look, this is similar to a question from our textbook. If you look at the textbook, what you see here is negative 3, 4, and 1. And what that is is the fact that they just have the direction vector then multiplied by 4 so that there aren't any fractions. If it's not related to time, then it really doesn't matter how this is related to the whole numbers, but obviously whole numbers are, are nice to have. But 
basically the big idea that I want you to see is that the process is exactly the same until you get to this point where you're recognizing is it a single solution because I got a number is it a line because these two are right on top of each other or is it uh, no intersection because I end up with something impossible like 0 equals 2 or 0 equals 7 from that point that's when it changes just a little bit we find a variable here solve if it's a line like this one then we have to find the line so one of the variables we just make lambda basically all we're saying when we do that is that that variable is going to be where y is 0 and y is going a direction of 1 okay that can be done for any variable because the other two values will then just change based off of the values for y okay you can put zero in for any variable and you should get a specific va value for the other variables that's going to depend on which one you decide to make lambda okay so hopefully that was helpful and makes some sense and uh will help you in the in the future cheers